Hi, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, I'm going to provide you an overview of Azure SQL Managed Instance. Azure SQL Database Managed Instance is a new deployment model of Azure SQL Database based on vCore based purchasing model. Basically, what used to happen is previously Microsoft came up with DTU based purchasing model. However, many on premises customers, when they are trying to convert their existing configuration into DTU based purchasing model, they used to face a lot of difficulty because there is often a bit of ambiguity on how to convert their existing configuration of SQL database into this DTU based purchasing model. So what Microsoft done is they came up with a new offering called SQL managed instance with a purchasing model of vCore based. So vCore based purchasing model enables you to easily convert the existing configuration of your on premises SQL database into Azure. Okay. So this particular SQL managed instance is mainly targeted to our on-premises customers. On-premises customers can easily lift and ship their on-premises SQL Server to a managed instance that offer compatibility with SQL Server on-premises. So that's the big advantage. And the second advantage is, although it's a lift and shift, it doesn't mean that you are losing all the past benefits. You still have all the past benefits available with SQL managed instance. And one additional important feature associated with SQL managed instance is security. Because managed instance gets deployed into in its own network, your environment is actually isolated from all other environments. And finally, it's a new business model. It is very competitive, transparent and frictionless business model. Basically, if you have SQL Server licenses, then you can recycle them and use them in Azure. Basically, the overall cost of this managed instance will come down by 30% if you are using your on-premises SQL Server licenses. So let's go through this security thing in a bit more detail. Managed instance provide additional security isolation from other tenants in the cloud. So this security isolation basically includes a native virtual network implementation and connectivity to your on-premises environment using either Express Route or VPN gateway. You can use either of them to connect your existing on-premises network with the virtual network that gets created with managed instance and connecting to the database privately over private network. That's one big advantage. And the second advantage is SQL endpoint is exposed only through a private address, allowing safe connectivity from private Azure or hybrid networks. So there is no public endpoint for the clients to connect. It's only through a private IP address. And finally, and most important thing is it's a single tenanted environment. It's not multi-tenanted. It's a single tenant with a dedicated underlying infrastructure. So both compute and storage is dedicated for you. In that way, you can satisfy some of the regulations you have based on the country where you are located. And finally, you need to understand how the structure of managed instance looks like and how the communication happens. So let me take you through that. Firstly, when you create managed instance, a virtual network will get created, which will have front end subnet, gateway subnet and managed instance subnet. And the node that you deploy as part of managed instance creation will get deployed into MI subnet. Each node is basically consists of SQL engine and SQL management. And basically within the same network, you can deploy multiple nodes also. And these multiple nodes will form a virtual cluster with gateway servers. And this entire virtual cluster will have two endpoints. The first endpoint will be for client connections. Whenever the clients, whether it is applications or users want to connect to the database, they can use this endpoint, which is basically mi underscore name dot DNS zone dot database dot windows dot net. Zone will be defined based on where it is deployed and mi underscore name is basically your managed instance name. Okay. And the second endpoint is a public endpoint, but will be used by Microsoft in order to manage this environment. Because Microsoft is responsible for managing this environment, they need to connect to this environment using some automated script or something like that and manage it. For that purpose, there will be an endpoint. Also, for this entire environment to work properly, it needs to connect to Azure Storage and Service Bus also. So when you are trying to restrict the traffic from your MI subnet to the outside, make sure you allow all the traffic related to the Microsoft. Otherwise, your environment might not work properly. And finally, in terms of client connections and applications to connect to the database, 
they can reside in front end subnet and connect to the database or they can reside in a peered network the moment you peer the network with your mi subnet then all the web apps or virtual machines can be able to connect to the database because both networks are peered and also you can connect your on premises applications to this database also by creating either virtual network gateway or express route via that also you can connect to the database basically all the connections whether it is from web apps virtual machines or on premises applications all of them are communicating with the database over a private connection so this is how the communication happens this is very similar to the app service environment if you are aware of it basically they provide the similar concept in database environment also which they are labeling it as managed instance okay so that's it for this lecture in this lecture i have taken you through managed instance its features and what is the advantage from security perspective and also how everything structured together to deliver managed instance service i hope you find this lecture useful